Hello there, friends. It's Father Andrew once again. And today I want to talk about the surge of inquirers, catechumens, and converts into the Orthodox Church. And if, if you're not Orthodox or you don't know much about Orthodox Christianity, this video might seem like a little bit of inside baseball, but stick with me and maybe you'll be interested in this because of especially one of the things I'm going to say about this. First of all, the question is, what exactly is happening? Well, um, a couple of years ago now, I started hearing from a number of my friends who are clergy about a surge of people showing up to their churches, right? And often they would say things like, we are seeing more than we have ever seen before. And for a lot of long-standing clergy, a lot of clergy have served in parishes for a long time, they'll say, I am now seeing more inquirers, more catechumens than I have seen in the whole time that I have served in this parish. Not just all at once, but in some cases, more than all their previous years combined. And I can attest that um, about a year and a half ago or so at our parish here in Emmaus, Pennsylvania, we had more people that we were going to uh, receive into the church than I myself had received in all the years that I had been the pastor of the parish, which was 11 years in total. I mean, we had some, a few every year or so, but now it's it's um, it's a lot more. So I just want to, um, to get into this. I want to read a few of the things that I've heard from other clergy. And I have asked about this um, on Facebook. I said, hey, are you seeing a surge into your parish, right, of inquirers, catechumens, converts, people who've actually crossed the line? So I want to read a few things to you first from clergy, and then I'm going to read some stuff from some lay people too. Uh, one clergyman says, it is almost overwhelming how many we are seeing right now. I have a spreadsheet with over 80 people on it who are inquiring in one way or another. I have about 30 coming to an inquirer's class right now. Another one says, before COVID, we were averaging 115 to 120 on a Sunday. Now we are averaging 165 to 170. It's been pretty remarkable. Unless disgruntled Protestants or Catholics and more atheists, Wiccans, and people with no religious backgrounds. That's been actually kind of fun. Clean slates, not a lot of churchy baggage, he says. Um, another one says, I started at this parish two years ago, and the average liturgy attendance was 12, and six was my family. Since then, we have grown with people returning and people searching with an average 50 at liturgy. Another says, currently I have five catechumens with another five seekers and received nine since being assigned. We are receiving three on Holy Saturday. Another one says, we have seen a doubling in our numbers. And of course, we are needing to expand 12 catechumens to bring in on Lazarus Saturday, about 10 waiting till later, making new catechumens nearly every week, tons of 30-ish men and a few gals, lots of families. We've had to begin using the nave for coffee hour for additional space. Parking is a headache. Good times. Another one says, in the past two years, we've brought in 50 people at our parish. I currently have 15 catechumens, another dozen serious inquirers. We have new visitors every weekend and typically have one or more email inquiries every week. Our congregation is double the size of our liturgical space. Another one says we have about 20 or 30, 25 to 30 right now. I'm going to bring in most at Pascha and the rest soon after. More keep coming. And uh, one that's particularly interesting to me is he says, um, we have seen a surge in converts. We received maybe six or seven last year. We have around a dozen lined up for Pascha this year. And a new class is being lined up now for catechism. We've never seen that in this parish, especially since we pray half of our services in Arabic and still do. And yet the interest is 20 times than we've ever seen. So that's just uh, a few of the clergy that I've heard from. And I want to share with you now from some of the lay people that I've heard from. The COVID years have brought in well over 100 new converts. We had to expand our nave. I don't have exact numbers, but this year alone, we've had 30 plus families join our church. It's been going like this for the past few years. Most are young families and young men. Another says... Our church has grown by 150 people in the last five years, and we don't fit into our building anymore. Another one says, more men than women, but definitely both, mostly young people. I've been a mission priest's wife for 40 years and have never seen a trend 
like the current one. Another person says, it's crazy. I've never seen anything like it. In response to my query on Facebook, I asked people, where are you? I want to know exactly where this is happening. And I wrote down the responses. Um, as of this morning, I think there were close to 700 comments on the Facebook post, which is crazy. Um, but I have read them all. Um, and so I kept track of I, I kept track of U.S. states, Canadian provinces, and countries that I'd heard from. So there are 50, United, 50 states in the United States I have heard from. Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Arizona, California, Colorado, Connecticut, Florida, Georgia, Iowa, Idaho, Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Maryland, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Mississippi, Montana, North Carolina, North Dakota, Nebraska, New Hampshire, New Jersey, New Mexico, Nevada, New York, Ohio, Oklahoma, Oregon, Pennsylvania, South Carolina, South Dakota, Tennessee, Texas, Utah, Virginia, Vermont, Washington, Wisconsin, West Virginia, and Wyoming. I'm only missing Delaware, Hawaii, Kansas, and Rhode Island. That is 46 out of 50 U.S. states. I have heard from Alberta, British Columbia, Ontario, and Quebec in Canada. Internationally, I've heard from Australia, the Bahamas, Brazil, Colombia, Costa Rica, Finland, Germany, Lithuania, Malaysia, Nether the Netherlands, Norway, Singapore, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom, including England, Scotland, and Wales. Um, everyone is saying this is more than they've seen ever seen before. And they're saying that this has picked up just in the past few years. This is all anecdotal, of course. What I'm hearing from is anecdotal. But I wanted to get some hard numbers. Um, it's almost impossible to figure this out. So I talked to a friend of mine who has been doing a close study of about 20 parishes in the United States and asking their clergy a lot of detailed questions. And uh, there's a lot of interesting data there. And God willing, this study is going to be published sometime in the next few months. So be on the lookout for that. Uh, but one of the things that was noticed is that um, in this study, the increase of people who have been baptized or chrismated from 21 to 23 versus the previous three years, 2018 to 2020, there was a 62% increase. And then if you compare 2022 to 2023, those two years, uh, against the previous two years, 2020 to 2021, there has been a 94% increase. Now, some of that, of course, can be pointed to and say, well, during especially the first year of COVID, uh, not as much was going on at parishes, for sure. But nonetheless, when you spread it even further out, you still see this 62% um, increase. Um, so what exactly is going on? What is going on? Um, I talked about where it's going on. Um, first off, I want to talk about the idea that um, the Orthodox Church has done something to attract these people. Um, here's what I found. We haven't done anything. I know that some people will say, you know, well, there's been this sort of shift in this direction or that direction in the church, and therefore... All these people are coming in and, and look, you know, they all seem to be this kind. But here's the thing. I've noticed some people will say, OK, a lot of people are coming in because they have particular political views or this kind of thing. Uh, and certainly there are some people that that is the case. But again, this is anecdotal. But I have talked with a lot of people. And uh, while, yes, there does seem to be a tilt towards young men, um, there is generally a tilt towards younger people. Now, before we get too excited about that, the truth is, is that almost everyone who changes religions, you can go look this up, almost everybody who changes religions at least one point in their life does so under the age of 40. That's just generally true. So people tend to change from one thing to another when they're, when they're a young adult, right? So it should not be a surprise that we're seeing younger people who are becoming Orthodox or at least showing up at our doors. That is, that is normal um, most of the time. Um, but is there something that the Orthodox Church has done to try to attract these people? There's not. There's not been some big program, especially not a nationwide program with like all the jurisdictions and definitely not a worldwide program 
where we said, let's let's do a big evangelistic push, right? Neither has there been some kind of like big shift in terms of the makeup of our leadership, right? The leadership hasn't suddenly shifted in one direction, uh, ideologically, theologically, whatever. I mean, the church is kind of what it is. Um, we don't tend to track these changes in terms of five or even 10 or 20 or even 100 years. Uh, we track them in centuries in the Orthodox Church. There's not some big change that's happened. And frankly, you know, the idea of trying to coordinate all these people to do something, uh, <laughs> anyone who thinks that just doesn't know how churches work. I mean, yeah, it never works that way. <laughs> it takes forever. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's not that. The Orthodox Church hasn't done anything to bring these people in. In fact, one of the people that commented said this, I can only speak for our mission. We haven't changed anything to make this happen or to try to draw them. It's just happening. I'm most interested in those who were previously unbelievers or unchurched. Many just felt something was missing, and they stumbled upon orthodoxy somehow, then Googled Orthodox Church near me, and voila. That's what this person says. Um, and that's been my experience. I mean, talking to the people that have come into our own parish here in uh, MAS, Pennsylvania, but also in, in a lot of the, the speaking engagements I've done in, in places, I've asked people, now, why did you come to the Orthodox Church? What drew you? And almost always you hear people say something was missing. Um, I very rarely hear people talk about ideological commitments that made them want to come. That doesn't mean they're, they're not out there. They are out there. I mean, I can, you can find them on the Internet. Um, but I, I, I haven't personally experienced this, and, and none of my responses of the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of responses I've gotten have people saying that. Um, I'm not saying it's not out there, but I don't think it's that big of people coming for ideological reasons. Um, it's mostly people saying things like something was missing, right? Now, here's why I think that a lot of our discussion about this so far as Orthodox Christians has been um, stunted, <laughs> frankly. And that is that when a, any group tends to think about a big change that they're seeing happening, they tend to ask, like, what is it about us that's happening? Why is this happening? You know, and, and a lot of, you know, more, more triumphalistic people will say, you know, well, the Orthodox Church is, is the one true church. And, and, and so therefore, this thing is happening. It's like, well, we, we've been the, the one true church, <laughs> and we haven't seen this happen. Um, what exactly is attracting people? The question, what is attracting people, implies that we did something or that we changed in some way that they weren't attracted before, and now they are. But I don't think that that's what's happening. I think the question we should ask is, what is compelling people? And again, a lot of people are saying something is missing. But what is compelling people such that it is hitting 46 out of 50 states? Now, I think that those other four states that it's happening there too. I just don't think I got any comments from people in those states. What is it that's happening that is compelling people uh, in four of the most populous provinces in Canada? What is it that's happening that's compelling people in places all over the world? What is it? What is going on? Um, I would love to say very quickly and easily, well, the Holy Spirit has decided to bring them in. And I think that that is true. But the question is, how did he do that? What was it that he used? And if you're looking at something that almost the whole world experienced that happened just within the past few years, it's pretty obvious what the answer to that is. And that is, the pandemic. In the pandemic, what happened is everyone was told, stay home, especially for the first several months. There was a lot of that. And then, um, and then during that time also, even when people weren't staying home in general, a lot of people were staying out of church. Um, most, frankly, because of their own choice, but in many cases because uh, church leaders were limiting who could come to church. And I know people have a lot of big opinions about that, but that's not what this uh, discussion I'm having today is about. And what happened is that when people stayed home, they stopped meeting with each other in person 
anywhere near as much as they used to. And so something really important was lost. And that is that sense of personal connection. Now, you might ask, okay, so when the restrictions are lifted, when people felt more confident about going out and being with their friends and so forth, why is it that they didn't just return to what they had been doing before? Well, um, I'm pretty sure that most people did. That most people did, right? It's not like we're seeing everyone make these religious, that's what I'm talking about, changes. Um, but what is interesting is that uh, I saw a survey that was done that within the space of about one year, about 12% of the American population changed religion in one year. 12%. That's one out of every eight people, roughly speaking. Now, they did not all come into the Orthodox Church. And that's why I said that some of our discussion about this has been stunted. Um, I like to read widely. I don't want to read just about what's happening in the Orthodox Church. I'm interested in what's happening in other religious groups. I'm interested in what's happening in society in general. And one of the things that I've noticed is I've heard similar kinds of testimonies from other churches. Now, not all churches. It tends to be the ones, frankly, that are functioning in a more traditional fashion. Now, traditional varies from one kind of church to another, right? Um, within the Orthodox Church, we don't really have parishes that are radically different from another in terms of their traditionalness. Um, I mean, I know that people argue about the little things, right? But in terms of like Orthodox worship, Orthodox worship is pretty much the same kind of thing wherever you go. Even like if you find a parish that is like hyper traditionalist and super ideological, and maybe they're like even some schismatic group that like really defines themselves in this way. If you walk into that, experience their divine liturgy, and then walk into what you might consider to be the most liberal, revisionist, progressive, whatever church that you can find and compare their services, they're gonna be almost the same. And so for the average person visiting, they're not gonna be able to tell the difference. But you can definitely tell the difference if you go to a very traditional, say, Catholic church versus one that's not. You can definitely tell the difference if you go to a very traditional, say, Anglican church versus one that's not. You can definitely tell the difference if you go to a very traditional Baptist church versus one that's not. I can go on and on and on. Like there's big differences between these things internally, but then also you have whole groups of people, whole denominations, that function in a much more kind of progressive, revisionist way. And frankly, they continue to decline. Now, what about the question of whether uh, this is a net growth? Because sometimes, you know, when you point out, wow, look at this surge, this surge of people coming to the Orthodox Church, they'll say, well, hold on now, hold on now. You know, there's a lot of people leaving too. Is this net growth? Can we then can we then conclude the Orthodox Church is growing? Um, I personally do not think, and this is based on the statistics that I've seen, that we are seeing a net growth yet. In fact, I think we're still seeing a net loss because the biggest change that people made religiously related to the pandemic is that they stopped going to church and then did not go back. I think more people stopped and did not go back than started going to church or switched to a new church, more people stopped and did not go back. So I do not think that we are seeing a net growth within the Orthodox Church. Um, I don't think that that's occurring. Now, maybe it will turn out to be that. I, I don't know yet. It's still very soon on all of this stuff, right? Um, I don't think it's a net growth. Um, but the point that I'm making here uh, is that the Orthodox Church is not actually unique in this regard. And the reason that I know it's not unique is because I'm seeing people talking about upticks in, in church attendance in a lot of other kinds of churches. And even, frankly, in churches that, um, in, in some cases, that one would not consider to be like super traditional. Like I saw an uptick in church attendance in Finland amongst the Lutheran church that's there in Finland, which is not particularly conservative, traditional, however you want to think of it. I mean, it is the state church of Finland. And yet there is this growth in church attendance, especially among younger people. So people are looking for something. And there's something about the pandemic that made them start looking in a new way, right? 
And I'm not going to say that the pandemic, that its main effect in this regard is to bring people into churches. I don't think that that's true. Because at the same time, again, we have to look at these things contextually. At the same time, we're also seeing a rise in other kinds of changes. Like, for instance, there's a rise in suicides. There's a rise in suicides. There's a rise of mental health problems, right? There's a rise in uh, educational failure. There's a rise in divorce, right? Um, Although I don't think that that's super big, um, probably some of the financial concerns might kind of offset that. I don't know. But in any event, um, here's my thought about how to interpret all of this that we're seeing is that if you think of the, the, the human race as kind of functioning in a big circle, there's most people who are somewhere near the middle or somewhere be, you know next to the middle. And then there's some people that are on the edge. And it's different edges that they're near. Different edges. And... What the pandemic did is it pushed a lot of people over the edge. And what edge were they near? Well, some people were near an edge of of, uh, mental health. And um, and, and many of them killed themselves. Like there's been a severe, God help us, a severe uptick in suicides, Um, especially among younger people. There's a lot of other things that have, have gone over the edge as well, like a lot of the identitarianism that has been going for a while, right? This sort of explosion of different ideas about who people say that they are, uh, it accelerated in just the past few years. So a lot of people went over that edge, right? The the edge of hyper-identitarianism. Certainly, we could say that our our politics has gone over the edge (laughs) in a lot of ways. Not that it's been great for a while, but it got even crazier, I think, in just the past few years. And then some people are near the edge that is going to church for the first time or maybe for the first time in a long time or changing to a different kind of church. And some little segment of that edge is the Orthodox Church. And so the people who are near us in one way or another showed up at our doors. That's what's happening, I believe, from what I'm seeing. So then the question is, and this is a question that several people have asked, and I think it's an important question. This is not the question that I asked on my Facebook post because that's not what I was looking for because I already have, I have some ideas about this. And frankly, when, even when people volunteered their ideas about this, they didn't say anything that was different from things that I was already thinking. What now? What now? What do we do with all these people that are showing up besides building programs and parking lot expansions and stuff that is going on? Like... We are doing that here here in Emmaus. Um, we, we have a building program. We have another piece of property that we're going to, God willing, going to build a new church on. What now? Well, we can't just expand the space to fit all of these people. Um, because that's not what the church is about. The church is about making Christians about making Orthodox Christians, making good ones, like real, the real deal, firmly planted, fully traditional, fully faithful to all of the teachings of the Orthodox Church, all of the teachings of the Holy Scriptures, of the Holy Fathers, of the the divine services, the canons, all of that stuff, right? It's about training people to become people who love their neighbor with active love people who sacrifice themselves, people who are serious about prayer, people who engage in almsgiving, people who engage in fasting, people who engage in regular worship, like all of these things that are being, that is the normal parishioner, not the average parishioner, unfortunately, but the normal parishioner, this is what their life looks like, right? So when someone comes to our door and they say, let me in, um, what's, not super important is what brought them to the door. Now, that can be part of the conversation. So what brought you here, you know, because that's a good way of getting to know people. But the more important thing is, is why you walk through the door and what is going to happen once you get through it. I did an earlier video about why you walk through the door. And the reason that you walk through that door is Jesus Christ. So if someone shows up for some other reason than Jesus Christ, then we need to present Jesus Christ to them, preach the gospel to them, and then invite them to walk through that door on that basis, not on some other basis, on that basis. Right. But then when they walk through the door and here, this is something I've been thinking for a lot of years, actually, before the surge ever happened. 
um, catechism, training these new Christians, should not be only what we think of as sort of the Orthodoxy 101 approach. Now, I know a lot of catechetical programs are titled Orthodoxy 101, so I'm not knocking that if that's what the title of your catechetical program is. But I mean the idea of sort of teaching them information about the Orthodox Church. Like, like here's, you know, the book, The Orthodox Church by Timothy Ware, later known as Metropolitan College of Ware. Learn all the stuff that's in this book. And a lot of Orthodoxy 101 classes are basically like teaching people the kind of information that's in that book. It's good information. It's good information, right? Uh, you know, what are the ecumenical councils? What did they teach? You know, what are the Orthodox churches? Where are they located? How is the church structured? Uh, how is our divine services structured? All this kind of stuff. This is all good and important information. But what makes a good Christian is not that he can pass a basic class about the Orthodox church. What makes a good Christian is that he lives like one that he lives like one, that he does those things that I mentioned earlier. Prayer, fasting, almsgiving, worship, active love, asceticism, right? All of this stuff that actually makes a good Christian. That's what it means to be an Orthodox Christian is faithfulness to God, obeying the commandments. It says in the scripture over and over again, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If someone's not keeping the commandments of God, that means they don't love him. And if you don't love God, then you're not really living as a Christian, right? So the training that we engage in with people who show up at our doors should be focused mainly on that. You can hand them a copy of that book that I mentioned, and they can read it, and they can read it over and over again and learn most of that information by reading that book, and they can come to the priest with questions. The main thing is to learn to live as the church lives, to be firmly planted. Now, if you are one of those people who has just shown up at our doors in the past few years, I'm also talking to you. I don't know what your catechism has been like. It, just a thousand ways it gets done. Some are great, some are okay, some are bad. Um, but but my advice to you, and this is obviously something to talk about with, with your parish priest, because his opinion, what his guidance is, is way more important than anything that I say but my advice to you is to seek to be firmly planted in that actual life of following the commandments of, of the worship, the, you know, all of these things, right? And on the other side, if you're one of the people who's there welcoming his people, whether you're just someone who stands at the door, you just happen to be part of the parish, whether you're assigned to stand at the door and welcome people, whether you are a catechist, whether you are a Sunday school teacher, you're the friend who brought them, whatever, aim at that being planted firmly, love those people in a way that they're going to want to love other people and it's going to be passed on and they're going to want to live the whole orthodox life the way that it's really lived because being an orthodox christian is not about an ideology it's not it's absolutely not it is about obeying the commandments of god it's about faithfulness to what our lord jesus christ told us to do and to all of what's in the scriptures and throughout the whole orthodox tradition um, so do we need to make a bunch of big changes in order to receive this surge well? Um, in many cases, obviously, we're going to need to change our buildings <laughs> just so we have space. But we do not need to change the Orthodox Church, right? Orthodoxy is what it is. It doesn't need to be changed. It does not need to be changed to accommodate anybody. It is what it is. Now, what may need to change is that a parish may need to become more faithful, to what the Orthodox Church is. They may need to become evangelism-minded, mission-minded, because that is what the Orthodox Church is. It is those things. They may need to become catechetically-minded because in some parishes, now it's fewer and fewer, thank God, but in some parishes there is no catechism program. They're going to need to become catechetically-minded. But that's not a change in terms of what Orthodoxy is. That's a change of, of a parish becoming more faithful to what it means to be Orthodox. So, you know, stay normal, but not average. Stay normal according to the norms of the Orthodox faith. Here's the last thing I'll say about this search. I know that a lot of people, when a bunch of people suddenly show up at the door, their first thought is, well, I don't know about this. <laughs> In one way or another, I've seen that a lot. Um, however you want to define that. 
you know, maybe it could be, I don't like those kind of people or um, our church is too full now or it used to be so quiet here and now it's not or, or whatever. Or, you know, these people are all just young whippersnappers and they don't know the first thing about this, right? I mean, this is nothing new. Uh, we've seen this forever, right? Um, indeed, I mean, one could even say that the big argument in, the, in Acts 15 over whether Gentiles had to become Jews before they could become Christians is a, a, a reflection of this argument. Like, who are these Gentiles? You know, you guys better get circumcised first, whatever. Um, if, if that's your feeling, I'm sorry, but stop it. The whole world should be Orthodox Christian. The whole world should be Orthodox Christian. So the question is not, these people need to shape up whatever. No, it's how do I welcome them and love them and open the doors to them and help them become firmly planted? Yes, some of, gonna, some of them are going to show up and cause some trouble. And we help to help them to get to repentance. Just like if you cause trouble, you want someone to help you to get to repentance. Just like someone who's been in the church for their whole lives. You, they need to be brought to repentance. Repentance is what this thing is about. It's not about showing up and being perfect at it and knowing everything there is to know about it on day one. It's about repentance. So when people show up to the door of our church, the Holy Spirit has brought them. Now, they may say something different from what sounds good to us. They may say something that's very disturbing, but the Holy Spirit has brought them. And so how am I going to help them to meet Christ? How am I going to help them to repentance? And taking an imperious attitude is not going to help them. It's not. Absolutely not. We need to be humble and ready to receive them. And don't be like that older brother in the prodigal son story. Don't be like that guy. Be like the father. Welcome them home. And so if you are one of these people that has shown up here at the Orthodox Church in the last few years, welcome home. Now we've got some chores for you to do. God bless you.